Hello, this is Kara Tierney from Monroe Community College once again. And in this video, we're going to talk about precipitation reactions. And the best way for me to talk about that is to show you an example. So we're going to get all meta right now and watch a YouTube video in a YouTube video. And what she's going to do is show you a precipitation reaction. Adding very pale yellow sodium iodide to colorless mercury 2 chloride produces an orange precipitate. Oh. She stirs it around, and if you notice, there's like a powdery substance in there. That is a solid, and that is called the precipitate. So that is a precipitation reaction. Now that was a combination of two aqueous ionic solutions. Uh, if we were to look at this one, which is sodium iodide and potassium nitrate, they look a lot like that, and when you mix them, nothing happens. Wah, wah. So what we're going to do in this video is determine how do you know when a solid is formed and when a solid is not formed. When a solid is formed, you get a precipitate and the reaction occurs. When a solid is not formed, you get something boring over here, like this right here. Boring, no reaction. So how do you know if a precipitate forms? The steps that we do, uh, are they what we have right here is whenever you have a precipitation reaction, you are looking for the products of a double displacement reaction or a metathesis reaction. So the first thing you have to do is switch the cation and anion partners. We're going to look at this equation again of the reaction that we saw that formed the uh, orange colored solid. So we have sodium iodide reacting with uh, mercury chloride. And so what we do is Sodium has a plus charge, iodine has a negative charge. So the sodium is going to now react with the chloride because that has a negative charge, and the iodine is going to react with the mercury because the mercury has a positive charge and iodine wants to react with something that uh, has an opposite charge. I call this the outside, outside, inside, inside method of finding the products of a double displacement reaction. So sodium and chlorine, sodium has a plus charge, chlorine has a negative charge. And this is going to bring us to our next step. Once we find who partners up, we need to balance the charges of the cation and anion in order to give neutral ionic compounds. So we're going to have NaCl as our first product. I'm going to put parentheses after it. We're going to deal with that in a little bit. The other product is going to come from mercury. Remember that in every ionic compound, we always put the cation or the uh, ion that has a positive charge first. Now I can tell that since uh, mercury is bonded with two chlorines, it must have a two plus charge. And we know that iodine has a negative charge. So we're going to get HGI2 as our other product. Now we need to check the solubility for each product. We see that sodium chloride, and we know from experience that that is soluble. So we put an AQ for something that's soluble. When you look up mercury iodide, you see that it is an insoluble, so we put an S. An insoluble product with an S is your precipitate, and that is what causes the reaction to happen. If both of our products end up being aqueous, much like the reaction that happened in the previous slide, we have two products that are aqueous, and that is why nothing happened. And then the last step is we balance the reaction using coefficients. So I'm going to balance this. We see that we have two chlorines right here, and so I'm going to need two sodium chlorides, and now I'm going to balance with another two here and our reaction is finished, and if we were to identify our precipitate, that is this right here. It is the solid product. So now what I want you to do is, um, we're going to do a few examples together, and I uh, have lots of examples to make sure that you understand this process. So for this uh, reaction, I want you to complete and balance the reaction. If you find that there are no 
uh, products that are solid. If both products are aqueous, you write no reaction underneath the reaction. So why don't you try this one out? Pause the video now and see how far you can get. Press play when you think you have the correct answer. Let's do this problem. So we have uh, silver and it is bonded to one nitrate so we know that the silver has a plus one charge and magnesium always has a plus two charge. So if we do our outside outside and our inside inside we know that silver has a plus one charge chlorine has a negative one charge so our first product is going to be AgCl and we put it in parentheses. Our second product comes from magnesium. Remember, even though magnesium is second in the uh, equation, we need to put it first in the formula because it has a plus charge. And it's bonding with nitrate, which has a negative charge. So we need two of those nitrates in order to balance out the positive two charge of the magnesium. So we have magnesium right here. Magnesium nitrate. Now we look up the solubilities of these two products and you will find that silver chloride is insoluble, it's a solid, and that magnesium nitrate is soluble so it's aqueous. Now we balance the reaction. We have two chlorines with our magnesium so we need two chlorines over here and two silvers over here balances it out. I'm going to circle, whoo, not that, I'm going to circle that right there. Why am I circling it? That is our precipitate. Let's try another one. Problem example 3B. I would like you to pause the video right now and see how far you can get. Here we go. So copper is bonded with two iodine. So that's going to tell us something. So outside, outside, inside, inside. Copper must have a two plus charge because it's bonded to two iodines. Remember that copper, as well as the, so, uh, the silver that we looked at in the last problem, they're transition elements so they can have more than one charge. This is going to bond with sulfur, which when we look at the periodic table, we know it has a two minus charge. If we do our crisscross, we end up with Cu2S2. These twos cancel out, and so we get CuS. And let's leave that blank. If we go for our inside inside, we have an Na plus and an I minus. So our other product is sodium iodide. Now we look up our solubilities and we see that copper sulfide is insoluble so we put an S there and sodium iodide is soluble so we put an AQ there. Now we balance and all we need to balance is a 2 there. So does this reaction happen? Yes it does because of this right here which is a precipitate. We have one more problem to try. So here we have our last example and uh, I want you to pause the video now and see how you do with it. Okay, let's give it a whirl. So we have our outside goes with outside, our inside goes with inside, and we have lead. Now lead is another transition element. We see it's bonded to two nitrates, each have a negative one charge, so lead must have a plus two charge. It is going to bond with phosphate, which has a three minus charge, and so we're going to do a crisscross in order to get PB. We need three of those, and now we need two phosphates, so we put the phosphate in parentheses with a two, and then let's put parentheses there. I'm going to give myself a little extra room and write on the next line. That's fine if you do that in class as well. And our next combo is going to be lithium, which has a plus charge, nitrate, which has a negative charge, 
to give us lithium nitrate and we will look up the solubility of these two. So when we look up the solubility, we see that lead phosphate is going to be our precipitate and lithium nitrate is going to be in solution. So once again, we don't use the no reaction because we do have a precipitate. The last thing we need to do before we finish up this equation is we need to balance it. So I'm going to balance my leads first. I need three of them here. And then I'm going to need two phosphates here. And that means that I'm going to need six lithiums over here. And that's going to balance me out. So this is the end of this video. And there is another video that you need to watch in this series before a class. So I will see you in the next video.